Okay, so I'm going to change hats a little bit and I'm going to become your family doctor for a minute because we all need more energy, right? Who can't have more energy? But sometimes the choices that we make may not be the best choices for us. So I'm here to give you a little bit of friendly advice because there's three secrets to healthy longevity. And it all has to do with making a choice of convenience over a choice of common sense. What are those three things? Well, number one, you need a diet which has appropriate nutrients, has appropriate antioxidants we've talked about, has appropriate vitamins and minerals. You gotta do that on a daily basis and it has to be strict. Number two, you need to find an activity you're passionate about. Something that will encourage you to have lifelong participation in an activity. You need to do it. Those two are not options. They need to happen. I try every day, but are we perfect? And if we're not, we get to secret number three, and that is diet supplementation. There's clear evidence that people who supplement their diets do better than those that don't. It's going to be up to you guys to figure out how you want to do that and what you want to do it with, but those are the three keys to what I like to call healthy longevity. In the most extreme forms, lack of energy will produce a syndrome called chronic fatigue syndrome. It's been a controversial thing for many years and nobody really understands it. And it's very hard to study because it comes in so many different varieties and flavors. So what do researchers do? We typically will go to the lab, develop an animal model, and the animal model will help us to understand the mechanisms of action. And you can actually do this in an animal. You can develop a model where they exhibit all the signs and symptoms of chronic fatigue, but more importantly, you can measure biochemical markers of inflammation. And this was done to test the hypothesis, the theory, the thought, the idea, that if you gave an antioxidant to these animals experiencing chronic fatigue, would it make a difference? Well, guess what they found? Not only did it relieve the signs and symptoms, but it also reversed the biochemical markers. Now, can we take that as proof that it's going to happen in all of us? You can't. But it certainly is exciting information, and I don't think it's information that we can avoid or ignore. Moving on. Has anybody ever experienced pain? And if you're not putting your hand up, you're totally asleep by now. Okay? So, pain in its most extreme form again will form a syndrome called fibromyalgia. Has anybody heard of fibromyalgia? You might know people that have fibromyalgia. It's a horrible problem. It affects about 10 million Americans. Translation, probably a million Canadians. We're usually about a tenth of what the Americans have. Except for our currency now, it's pretty good. <laughs> the hallmark of fibromyalgia is chronic and widespread pain. It's an inflammatory problem. There's problems with fatigue, there's problems with mood, there's problems with anxiety and depression, there's problems with headaches and migraines, non-restorative sleep and environmental sensitivities. Those all occur in that disease. And until recently, the diagnosis itself was a puzzle to doctors and patients. Very frustrating problem to treat. There's no known cure, there's no known cause. All we know is that it's, an, it's a chronic inflammatory problem. So, it's worth repeating at this point that if you had something like chronic problem like fibromyalgia and you reach for that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory with the known side effects or a steroid even more potent with known side effects, it's worth repeating that the, the beta lanes have COX-2 inhibition, COX-1 inhibition, they work as anti-inflammatories. And again, although there's no proof that they will cure or treat this problem, having a naturally occurring plant-derived food supplement that has these pro properties is really intriguing for future treatments of these patients. All right, the topic of the night really is beta lanes. I've got three more slides to show you. Um, and this is where I try to not get excited like I can because like I said at the beginning, speculation can get you into trouble. And I really want to present to you some data. And in tonight's talk, half of you are asleep and half of you are awake, I hope, and the half that are awake anyways, I really can't go through all the data. And literally, I have reviewed about 200 papers on the studies of beta lanes. Beta lanes have been around for 30 plus years, used in the food industry, so very well studied. 
So we can't review any, everything, but we're going to concentrate on the inflammatory part of it. Now, is this a new idea of using a natural product to treat disease? It's not. We can go back 3,500 years. They used to store their wine, their vinegar, and their water in silver bottles, a natural antibacterial compound, silver. In the 20th century, people put silver coins in their milk to preserve its freshness. You're shaking your head. You've heard that before. It's true. And the idea of using mold on bread, blue mold specifically, was standard practice in folk medicine in the Middle Ages. In the 1900s, we talked about penicillin in the pancreas, right? So let's turn the clock back a little bit more. Let's go back to the 1500s, maybe a little bit before that. There's a disease called scurvy. You've all heard of it. We don't see it because we eat fresh fruits and vegetables. But it was a horrible disease. It killed millions, literally, of voyagers of the time. And as early as 1500, they knew that if you went to shore and you drank tea made from the white cedar, you could treat scurvy and prevent deaths. They hadn't figured out how to do that on the ships. In the next 300 years, 2 million voyagers were killed by scurvy, or died because of scurvy. 300 years. And imagine how crazy it would have been for a physician at the time to say, all you need to do is eat a lemon a day or a lime or some acidic fruit, and you won't get scurvy. It must have sounded crazy. Well, how did they actually figure out what scurvy, how, how scurvy affected people and how to treat it? It wasn't until an accidental discovery of an animal model to study scurvy. That happened about 1900. It took then 30 more years to find out what vitamin C was until people actually realized what was going on. So history has taught us that if we're looking for the cure, for potentially life-threatening problems, which scurvy was of the day, we just need to look to nature. And again, to quote William Osler, the desire to take medicine, perhaps the greatest feature which distinguishes man from animal. You might want to think about that just for a little bit. So, big question, are you ready for a change? Should we be changing the way we're doing things? Well, without a doubt, beta lanes have exceptional antioxidant activity. So we think of vitamin C or vitamin E as potent antioxidants. In the lab, beta lanes are three to four times more potent than them. And this fact alone may prompt some people in the audience to say, you know what, I really have to look at these beta lanes. Maybe they're better than what I'm doing now. And if you're not doing anything, you really have to rethink that idea. We've talked about the lab studies with the COX-2 inhibition. The question is, is there any other evidence? Well, I could review a bunch of papers. Let me give you just one example. Back to the lab. So when we have to study something, we'll develop a model in a lab. We call that in vivo if we're using an animal. And if you're trying to study inflammation, you can't just pick an animal that just happens to have it by accident. So you have to somehow induce an inflammatory response. So in this particular study that I, I reviewed, which was uh, published in 2009 in Italy, they gave a substance to an animal that called, pl caused pleurisy. Does anybody know what pleurisy is? It's an inflammation of the lung. Now, the neat part about it was, was that they developed this model that says, okay, if we inject the animals with this and this, they will develop pleurisy. But what happens if we give them a beta lane or an antioxidant for a month before and then insult them? Guess what? Their biochemical markers don't change and they don't develop pleurisy. In fact, they found that the beta lanes were protective of inflammation. Now, it's premature to say that that's going to happen in all of us and to conclude that that's going to be efficacious or that's going to work in humans. However, the data is highly suggestive of the protective effects that a potent antioxidant can have. The question is, could this lead to other effects? And I've had questions before the talk tonight about things like cancer and, and neurologic diseases and so on. The focus of our topic tonight was inflammation in general and specifically arthritis. The simple answer is yes. In other words, beta lanes can have multiple effects on multiple different diseases. Last slide for you, and then we'll turn the floor over to Ken. I'm going to explain to you just one more time how inflammation works. And it's my little campfire up top there. So inflammation is like a fire that burns within us. 
And we've all been out camping, and at the end of the camping, any good Boy Scout will tell you that you need to stamp out that fire and make sure it's completely out. And that's how your body works when it's trying to get rid of a problem. But what happens if you leave a couple of coals smoldering the bottom of the campfire? A couple of days later, you could have a forest fire that destroys the complete forest. You didn't even know that that coal was there. Chronic inflammation does the same thing within our bodies. And I'll refer you to a little article that was in Time Magazine in 2004, which is called The Fire Within. And if you haven't seen it, you can get it online, The Fire is Within. Great article, reviews a lot of the stuff I've talked about on how inflammation is associated with so many different problems. So hopefully I've presented a little bit of evidence tonight to you to stimulate questions, questions about what you're going to do personally, and again with your family and friends, when you leave the door tonight. And hopefully at least I've told you that you need a really good diet and you need to exercise because those are key and find something you're passionate about because that's important and do it hopefully forever. As Spock says, live long and prosper or work towards that healthy longevity that we all deserve. And I really believe that we've cast enough doubt on what we're doing. So what we're doing is not working. I see it every day in my office and it's very frustrating. And I see it every day when we walk out on the streets. Let's not repeat what happened with the story like scurvy. Let's not wait for the double-blind placebo-controlled trials, which the doctors want, before they start something new. Clearly, betalanes demonstrate exceptionally antioxidant properties. Clearly, we need those in our diet. And as a result, I really think that antioxidants are one of the secrets to healthy longevity. I really do. So with that last statement, I'm going to turn the floor back over to Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Dr.